But what I want people to get is two big mindsets. So now that you know, okay, I'm going into this and I'm going to allow myself to be vulnerable. And that doesn't mean sharing a vulnerable story. Because a lot of us feel comfortable doing that as long as we have the story scripted, right? (laughs) But are you willing to show up and say, um, are you willing to show up and not get it perfect? Are you willing to show up and stumble over your words sometimes or not say something perfectly and express yourself perfectly? Are you willing to do that? Because that's the real vulnerability. Welcome to another episode of Listeners to Lead, where I'm helping podcasters launch and maintain a lead generating show. I'm your host, Alicia Galati, the CEO and head podcast strategist behind Galati Media, a full service podcast management company. On this show, you'll hear my guests and I discuss everything it takes to launch a successful podcast and keep it running. If you're ready to get leads, land speaking gigs, and create deeper connections with your audience through your podcast, then this is the show for you. Today on the podcast, we have Rashonda. You are going to love her as much as I do. She's an incredible human being, and she has a podcast and a business that's all around binge eating and really just creating habits and health and wellness that is making a difference in people's lives. Interesting fact, almost 100% of her clients come from her podcast. And so the fact that she is able to use her podcast as a lead generating machine, incredible, but she also creates base and bandwidth for her clients by batching her episodes. So we're going to talk about the mindset behind batching, stopping that perfectionist attitude from holding you back from making imperfect action and taking imperfect action and doing the thing, right? And then we're going to talk through step-by-step strategies that she is able to batch 12 episodes at a time. Absolutely love this conversation and I know you will too. Join me in welcoming Rashonda to the podcast. Hello, Rashonda. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I am so excited to chat with you. If you could start by telling everyone who you are, what you do, and about your show. Of course. Thank you, first of all, Alicia, for having me on. I'm really excited to do this. And I'm Rashonda Yates, and I'm the host of the Ending Your Binge Eating podcast, where I help mission-driven and purpose-led women to stop emotional eating so that they can really show up fully in their purpose. Oh, I love that. As a emotional eater, (laughs) I think that it's such an important topic. Is that part of your business and like how you support women and helping them do that? And does it lead into your coaching? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so, and I I can talk a little bit about that as well, because we're talking about how I use batching today. And my podcast is my number one lead generation tool. 98% of my leads come through my podcast. That is incredible. Like, Mm -hmm. pause, everyone stop what you're doing. (laughs) This is the listeners to leads show. So (laughs) 98%, that is fantastic. Like, holy cow, what great results. We're going to talk about that. Yes. But let's start with like why you started your podcast. Of course. So the reason I started my podcast was to share my story, to connect with people who could resonate with what I had gone through. I struggled myself with binge eating and I had overcome binge eating. I had lost weight. I had kept it off after like 20, 30 years of struggling with it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that there were other people who had the same struggle, who needed support, but also who felt ashamed of it, who felt like, why don't I have this figured out? Who felt guilty about it? And who also felt trapped in the problem. And I knew that podcasting was a way that I could reach them, that I could reach out to those people, especially around this particular topic, right? So I know a lot of people have other, you know, topics that they want to talk about that make them vulnerable, that make them, you know, that are delicate. And podcasting Mm -hmm. is such a great way to enter that conversation with people who, feel ashamed to reach out and ask for support. And so I knew that this was a way that I could do that. I could bring people into this world where I'm like, you know what? I see you. I have struggled with this. And then also offering tools to actually get out of that problem. Yes. And I'm thinking too of like, you started your podcast three years ago, right? And so even thinking of three years ago, even looking at now, 
the people who create the video content, I mean, we're both women of color, like they tend to be stick thin, mostly white, like podcasting is such a great way to be able to get your voice out without the societal bias that can tend to happen via video. And I love this aspect, especially for people of color, like get your message out there. Your people will get to know you like you trust you based on your story, based on being vulnerable, based on being you, that it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter. You could literally show up in pajamas and a tank top and call it a day. Hallelujah. Like, let's talk about badging, right? So three years of podcasting, over 125 episodes, incredible, like round of applause real Thank quick you. for you because <laughs> that is so amazing. How do you batch? Tell me all of your batching secrets, please, because I know it can be difficult for people, right? Like setting the time aside, coming up with the content, feeling overwhelmed. What's your strategies? Yes. Okay. Before I get into this, I just want to reflect back to you something that you you mentioned, because like you talked about when we are podcasting, we can, without having that bias, reach people, right? And when I tell you, like, I've attracted so many different kinds of people, even though I am a woman of color and, you know, I'm a curvy girl and I've attracted everyone under the sun, people from Belgium, people from, of course, like other of my women of color, Latinas have come to me, therapists have come, like all these different people from all these different backgrounds. And it is just really, the power is you can't even imagine. Like, and I know it's only the tip of the iceberg for me. And then when it comes to batching, so batching for me started as me realizing I had a problem. Either I would be consistent for a while and I would be like on fire doing great, but then all of a sudden I would <laughs> ghost my audience for like a month, right? Or I would be consistent, but it felt so hard. It felt like I was like trudging through water trying to get this content out. And what I discovered, and if you can relate to entrepreneurship and like putting yourself and content out in the world is like, it's a growth, it's like a strategy for personal growth. If you can relate to that, you're my people. (laughs) Because basically what ended up happening was I realized that I was bumping up against perfectionism. I was trying to sound smart. I was trying to sound like I knew what I was talking about instead of being able to trust that I know my stuff. And that's why it was so hard. I was making it hard, basically. I was making something harder than it needed to be. <laughs> so. uh, I mean, yeah, been there, done that, right? <laughs> like, especially when it's something that's so personal and so vulnerable of like, hey, I went through this and realizing, especially as an entrepreneur, like, You're not talking to people who are ahead of you. And I think so often we allow that perfectionism to stop us from taking action because we think someone's going to call me out who knows more than me. Nobody's calling anyone out, guys. Like, First of all, no one cares. (laughs) Nobody cares. Seriously. (laughs) And like, don't let that hold you back because the people who are going to be attracted to you are going to be the people who are steps behind you and can learn something from what you have to say. And I love this picture you created of trudging through your content because that is, it feels like you're sloshing through trying to just get this stuff out. And you know what? That shows up in your voice. It shows up in the types of content that you create. It ends up being such fluff content. You're not able to really be you, right? Like, And I feel like people, when it comes to creating content and like showing up as you, it can feel like I have to be this perfect version of what everybody else sees and this curated Instagram perfect because guys, it's still Instagram perfect. Everything you see on TikTok, it's still filtered dopamine hits of and then it's gone. Right. That's why I love podcasting because someone can go to Rashonda's episodes and go to episode one all the way through 128 episodes at this point where we're recording and hear your journey and hear your story and hear the realness of it, right? So how do you how do you batch them now that you've kind of come mm-hmm. to that 
point of being like, I needed to make a change. What's that change? What did you do? So the thing that I did was I stopped, like you were just talking about, it's a perfect tie-in. I stopped trying so hard to make myself that quote unquote Instagram perfect person. So what I'm getting at here is it's really a lot of batching is really about us shifting your mindset. It really is. I mean, I know that's, you know, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and the tactics. I have that for you. Trust me. I came prepared. <laughs> I have notes. <laughs> but what I want people to get is two big mindsets. So now that you know, okay, I'm going into this and I'm going to allow myself to be vulnerable. And that doesn't mean sharing a vulnerable story. Because a lot of us feel comfortable doing that as long as we have the story scripted, right? <laughs> but are you willing to show up and say, um, are you willing to show up and not get it perfect? Are you willing to show up and stumble over your words sometimes or not say something perfectly and express yourself perfectly? Are you willing to do that? Because that's the real vulnerability. And that does require courage. And when you have made that pact with yourself, okay, I'm going to show up and be me and I'm going to really let myself be seen. I want you to take on two mindsets. Number one is commitment. So right out of the gate, you, you want to look at this as a big learning curve. You're not going to come out with this perfect system for batching immediately. It's just not going to happen because we are all so different. Batching consists of so many different variables, not only what is your strategy, you know, what is your podcast for? It's also like, what is your personality? It's how do you work best? You know, what are your resources? Like there's so many different things that go into it. So there's no perfect batching strategy. So that's the first thing. So go into it knowing, like give yourself, I would say at least six months because you're going to give yourself a chance to go through several iterations of your batching, figure out what works, what doesn't work. The other mindset that kind of goes along with it is patience. <laughs> like give yourself the patience to not be perfect because it's not going to be perfect. I can't say this enough. Like it's not going to be perfect. It is <laughs> yes. not going to be perfect. It, there's a learning curve. So you're going to try things. And at first, you're, is, some things are just not going to work. Some things are going to feel hard and you're going to have to tweak them. But what comes out on the other side of it is when you've gone through that process, you're going to learn so much. You're not, you're going to learn way more than just about bashing, by the way. That's a spoiler <laughs> <Yes>. alert. <laughs> no, I love that you started with mindset because that's definitely one of the pillars that we like to talk about here. And I think that it's something that it holds us back, right, from taking action. And to your point of like giving yourself space and grace to figure out what that batching strategy looks like for you is so, so important. I went through so many iterations of figuring out as an introvert, as well as someone who like can only do so much people to face, <laughs> like face it, like one to one time even. Like I like that better. But as someone who really is like, I'm the kind of person as soon as I leave my house, I want to be home again. So like, I don't want to be around people. I don't want to like see people. But podcasting is perfect for that. But I can only do so many podcasts in a day or in a week or even client calls. And so figuring out a schedule that I take calls of like, all right, I'm going to test this way out. I'm going to do a whole week of calls and a whole week without. I'll tell you one thing, that whole week with calls, I was burnt out by the end of the week. And the week without calls, I was bored out of my mind. And I was like, I miss people. <laughs> so instead, I just take Mondays and Fridays of no calls. And I structure my calls a different way of like, only two calls per day. Perfect. Lovely. That works. Yes. So taking time. I mean, I didn't get it right the first time. I had to actually like, does this work? Why doesn't it work? And what might I do different? And I think that it really speaks to what you're saying. And like, there's no perfect batching strategy. And it's going to take time to figure out what batching strategy works for you. So let's go into them. You put your heart and your soul into your show. And I want to help you reach all of those potential listeners out there. That's why I'm excited to announce my upcoming podcast marketing workshop. It's about giving you practical tools to grow your audience. You'll learn the secrets to getting your podcast discovered, attracting your dream listeners, and boosting those download numbers. This workshop will be hosted live with a replay available on April 30th. 
you can sign up by going to galatimedia.com slash workshop. Let's grow our podcasts together. Yes, I love everything you said. The patience and grace, yes. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to give one caveat is that 99% of my podcasts are solo episodes. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to take that into account if you are doing a lot of interviews or, you know, even more interviews than that. So here's what I do. Here's how I think about structuring my batching process. And the number one, the biggest thing I think that is so important is to really plan like in advance. Um, (laughs) One of the biggest mistakes that I made when I first started is I would always like let myself get to that last episode in my, in my batch that was releasing. And it was like that Friday, that episode was coming out. It's like, oh crap, I don't have any episodes (laughs) that are in the tank. Right. So what I learned to do was to create space in my calendar for planning. And if I don't create that space and if I don't put it on the calendar, it ain't happening. So doing whatever you need to do to make that happen. So for some of us, we can just put it on a calendar and it's done. Others, we need accountability. You know, we might need somebody to be on top of us. So you might need like an Alicia or, you know, or somebody yeah. to be like, okay, like this is due, you know, you might need a due date. <laughs> So whatever that is for you to make that happen, it's a commitment to yourself that, okay, this is the time that I am going to be planning out my content for however long that you want to batch. So what I do is I batch 12 episodes at a time. And if you look at the, all batching is, is just grouping like tasks. So anytime I identify something that I repeatedly do, I try and make that a batching process. So this can be, I am brainstorming topics. That is one little chunk of time. I put aside two hours just to flesh out topics. It could be outlining. It could be a recording day. It could even be as granular as I'm going to sit down and write all of my headlines. I don't get that granular, but I, I think I do it along with my outlining, but it could be that, you know, I batch all my emails at one time. So, and then over time, I start to understand when each piece fit best in the process. So obviously you have to brainstorm topics first. So that obviously comes first. But later on, I started to realize like, okay, like if I write my social media posts first, then my emails flow better or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I also, here's a pro tip that it's not really part of this, but it's going to be helpful. Pro tips, yes. I know you talk about this too, Alicia, is um, transcripts, right? So what I do is I'm still like, I'm still very scrappy and very lean. I have otter.ai and that is a free transcription service that I use to record. Like I turn it on while I'm recording my episode. You know, I just keep it so simple. And then I have that and that helps me to write all the copy that follow, like all the copy I need. It comes from that transcript, basically. That's basically what I do. And so, and what I do is I'll take like that first two hour chunk of brainstorming that happens on a Monday and maybe on the Tuesday is when I'll start my outlines, but I will outline over the course of a couple of days, uh, you know, a couple of hours a week. Back to perfectionism. Like I said, it's a learning curve, but at some point you're going to need to cut yourself off from outlining. (laughs) (laughs) I love that you said that. Like, like give yourself a deadline of like a time limit. I'm only allowed to work on this for a certain amount of time. Right. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I have to learn that, you know? So um, I, where I am now is I set a timer for 30 minutes on my outline. It cannot take any more than that. By the time I get to that point, Because by then I've already fleshed out my topics. I've already done some research. But if chances are you're the expert in whatever topic you're talking about. So I promise you, you got this. You will have something to say. (laughs) So keep yourself to just, you know, some bullets. Don't over script it. And then you're good. And so what this allows is for you to really sit down and have this natural conversation with whoever you're speaking to, whether it's to yourself and your audience or whether it is your guest, it'll allow you to really be organic and have a natural conversation. And that allows people to connect with you better, right? Like, yes. like I connect with you so well and I can tell that you're, you know, you're just really good at this <laughs> <laughs> and it's super, super organic. You know, there's room for tangents and soapboxes and all these things, yes. but that's why people connect with you. So 
I love that. There's some things I want to pull out. The fleshing out topics. That's not something. And I feel like people get hung up on this sometimes. So I want to make sure that we talk about this. That idea of like, okay, I have to plan out 12 episodes, break it down. All right. What are those 12 topics? Why don't you create a Google Doc that you called your sandbox? I heard this on a podcast, guys. <laughs> it was a good idea. <laughs> but I I usually just have like a some type of dumping space or a brain dump document when something is like, ooh, that's a good idea. Or this question I got, that's something I could talk about on the podcast. Write it in there. Have a running log. So that way, by the time you get to the what in the world am I going to talk about on this podcast, you already have a running list of ideas. It doesn't have to be like, I have to scrounge and what are other people on their podcast talking about? Because anytime that you end up looking at what other people are doing and trying to replicate that or say, Ooh, this is a popular topic. I'm going to talk about it too. You're already behind the curve at that point. Like you're not ahead of it. You're not talking about it before everybody else is talking about. You're not going to be able to show up as a thought leader. And so when you're able to just create this running list, I think it's so valuable and such an underused strategy. So I wanted mm. to make sure that we discuss that. And I love your otter.ai pro tip because we also use otter. Don't think they're the best service out there, but for the price, and I pay for the business one, so it's pretty expensive, but for a solo person who is bootstrapping it, Otter also has this new thing that they recently did. I don't know if you've batched recently, so that's why I'm mentioning it, where they have a list of timestamps and the topics that you hit during those timestamps. Hello, there's your bullet points right there. What in the world did you talk about during your episode? Boom, done. And they make it so comprehensive. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I love Otter so much. So I love that you gave that pro tip. Also pulling out this idea of batching like things. And I feel like this is probably something that you do with your clients as well of like not binge eating and like getting over that mindset and moving forward. And when you're feeling like this and you get to the point where you're like, um, it's a spiral. <laughs> Don't spiral guys. It's okay. <laughs> I love these strategies. So good. Let's keep going. Cause I feel like we're just like, plowing through this. It's so good. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. Real quick, pulling out the finding out if like, all right, I wrote my social media and that allows me to write my emails like gold guys. I do need to re-listen to this episode. If you're like, I I don't know what to do with my episodes or batching. Re-listen to this episode because it's good. (laughs) You know, there's something I actually wanted to expand on something that you said, because I do that also with, I allow ideas to come to me whenever. And I switched to this when I was actually working with someone who was helping me like with marketing and things. And she was like, you know what? You don't have to. It was like this idea of, and I don't know if you ever use this language, but the idea of like between masculine and feminine energy and how feminine is like more of a flowing and then masculine is like more of the doing. And it was like, I was getting really just getting stifled mm-hmm. about like, oh my God, I have to force myself to be creative, you know? So that's the other side of that. It's like, if you feel like you have to force yourself, you don't. Like you get ideas when you're in the shower, you get ideas when you're driving, you get ideas when you're just kind of hanging out, playing or being yourself or whatever ideas come to you and let that, like you were talking about the same, I love the sandbox. Like I call mine the content vault and I just keep everything in like one, um, one or two places. Cause usually you can't (laughs) capture everything in one place because if you're driving, it's going to be a voice note. Right. (laughs) But I, I, so I really, I wanted to expand on that too, because that had, that was something that when I sit down to brainstorm, now just open that document up. And so I already have a bunch of ideas just there waiting for me. So I loved that. Yes. Uh, and it's so underused, I think. And I love going back into this, like batching, like you said at the beginning, there's no perfect way to batch. Right. And so listeners, you don't have to use Rashonda's way that she batches her episodes, but find what works for you. Right. So I was like recently, well, at this point, it's not recently, like two years ago, I was talking to someone and they were like, so my I want to do, I like to think off the cuff and kind of like riff, whereas my co-host wants to outline everything. 
how do we batch at that point? Like, how do we figure out what to do? And I'm like, first of all, y'all shouldn't have podcasts together. <laughs> but <laughs> beyond that, like having that conversation and like knowing yourself, first of all, is incredible and kudos for that. But also like letting the other person know, give me the outline but I'm probably going to go off the cuff. And that's great. (laughs) Like kind of setting that precedent to be you and to feel like, all right, I can show up great for my audience. What are some of the things that you've seen from batching, like freeing up your time or freeing up space for other things? Or what does that kind of felt like? Oh my God. I mean, it is really amazing. It really is because yes, all those things that you just mentioned, it allowed me to not constantly be working on my Mm. podcast. I mean, that's the biggest thing. And it's like, I love podcasting. I love it. And I love other things too. So it's like being able to know that I, that I'm, my people are taken Mm. care of and I'm in, in integrity with my commitment to take care of my people. And be able to really give my clients who come to me through my podcast the attention that they need and to be able to really support myself because when, you know, obviously I work in a health space. So if I'm not healthy, then I am out of integrity with my message. And so having enough time to feed myself well, to go outside and take a walk, to listen to podcasts that I enjoy. Side note, I was listening to your to one of your episodes on a walk before we started. And, you know, so freer time. And here's another one that it's kind of like a hidden amazing benefit is actually mental bandwidth. Like the mental bandwidth, which ironically makes even more ideas yeah. come in, you know? And it just really, it unlocks something for me where if I'm not constantly working on the podcast, all of a sudden I have more energy to work on the podcast. It's this ironic thing that you, you know, so if you think, oh, I don't have time to batch. You don't have time not to. You don't have time (laughs) not to batch. (laughs) Mic drop. (laughs) Really though, like, and going back to your, your first note of planning being one of the key points of it, of batching, like, That's something that I have intentionally done for my summer, right? And so many people fall off of podcasting during the summer. And I have clients where they're like, oh, well, who's really listening to podcasts during the summer? I'm like, actually, more people listen to podcasts during the summer and they have less to choose from because so many people stop over the summer and they go on a break or whatever. And so this batching (laughs) and this planning, knowing, hey, summer's coming, I need to batch up. That way I can enjoy my vacation and I'm not scrambling because an episode needs to go live in three days and I have nothing. (laughs) Like, don't put yourself in that position. Plan ahead, plan for vacations, holidays, so that you don't get to the point where you're scrambling or worse, you're sick and you're pushing yourself to the point where Mm -hmm. it's not good for you. It's not good for your audience. You're mentally not able to give them this space to really show up, which like you said, is what you've promised to your listeners. So important. Yeah. And it's, you know, again, it is a learning process for sure. You're going to learn what works for you. It may not work for you to plan out 12 episodes. You know, I get that that, that when I was talking to some people in a mastermind group recently about it and they were like, oh my (laughs) God, 12 episodes. And I'm like, is that weird? Like, I don't, so, you know, it may not work for for you to do 12, (laughs) but if you can do four then you can just stick to that, you know, whatever you can stick to, it's better to do something that, you know, you can sustain and be consistent than to do something that you're biting off more than you can chew. And, you know, in the future, maybe you hire, you outsource, do what you can right now. But yeah, I think the biggest things are just try it Yeah, (laughs) because it's once you get over the hurdle of those objections of, oh, I don't have enough time and get past perfectionism, you're going to find that there's so much rewards on the other side of that. And I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a client to the point where they're batched up. And they feel great. And then they have nothing for next week because they waited too long. And so 
I think that it's so important what you said before about like setting that time aside, creating a habit, which goes back to the binge eating as well, like create a habit that is going to work for you and keep doing that. And also don't like overextend yourself, right? Do what works, do what you can maintain and you'll be okay. Oh, Roshanda, this has been such an incredible conversation. If you can tell everyone where they can hang out with you, find you, listen to your show, if they're like, um, yes, that's me. I need help with that <laughs> because there's a lot of us that do. <laughs> where can they find you? Absolutely. And, you know, if you do struggle with perfectionism, that is a very common trait for people who also, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So a lot of times when people see that in their work, they do see it in their eating habits or they see it in their, you know, exercise habits. And so you can listen to my show, The Ending Your Binge Eating Podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. It's everywhere. Also, I connect with people in DMs on Instagram and Facebook. You can find me at Rashonda Yates. And I want to say one more time, thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. We'll make sure that we have links for all of that in the show notes. Go send a DM to Rashonda. Let her know that you found her here. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Listeners to Leads. If you found something in this episode valuable, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who you know would also get value from it. Want to send me a message? My favorite place to hang out is Instagram. You can find me at alicia.lotti. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was from the episode. And don't forget, turning those listeners into leads is actually easy.